So throughout the summer, I was like so many others, overwhelmed with dire news, about wars, droughts, floods, and other disasters. Droughts, wildfires, and heat waves. Yet the ones that stuck out to me the most were these disappearing lakes and rivers. For me, there's nothing as powerful as these outlandish images of a dystopian dry world exhibiting remnants of the past. Sunk Nazi ships were uncovered, still loaded with explosives. Ancient site called the Spanish Stonehenge was revealed, showing a super old formation of megalithic stones. All these long forgotten Buddha statues on the Yangtze River that completely struck my mind. But then there's this, and I must say this gives me the creeps. The Great Salt Lake. One of America's largest lakes is disappearing. And with it, an entire ecosystem with hundreds of bird species and one of the world's finest skiing areas. But the real jitters come from what's beneath. Covered by a shallow layer of water lies a dirty secret that once uncovered will threaten the lives of millions of people in and around the shiny metropolis of Salt Lake City. Beef. Before we dive right into this quest and try to find answers for all these questions, I really have to tell you about Brilliant, the sponsor for today's video. And I'm really excited because Brilliant is a fantastic platform for people like me, and I bet you're one of those two who want to learn and enhance their own skill set. You need some help with mathematics or simply improve your skills. Brilliant has a course for you. From basic everyday math over insights into algebra like the Pythagoras theorem to advanced subjects like probability and statistics, your math needs are all covered. But with Brilliant, you also have the possibility to learn something brand new. You always wanted to know how computer programming works? Brilliant's computer science module can help you get started on how algorithms work and computers function. Brilliant offers over a thousand different fun lessons to train your brain with, and interesting new courses are added every month. So go to brilliant.org slash Terramata and sign up for free. The link is right down here in the description. And be quick, the first 200 get a 20% discount on your annual premium subscription. Once again, thank you, Brilliant. And now back to the question, where did all those lakes go? My journey starts here, on my desk in Vienna, diving through the vast worlds of online maps. I stumbled across these time lapses on Google Earth. All over our planet, from Iran to Bolivia, there are massive lakes that lost vast amounts of their surface area during recent years. In this belief of what I saw, I looked deeper into this. Why are there entire lakes simply drying up and why so many of them? I realized that even my home country, Austria, a land known to be blessed with bountiful resources of fresh water, wasn't spared. On the country's eastern edge, only an hour drive away from Vienna, one of its largest lakes seemed to be drying up as well. The situation is so bad that ideas are popping up with a plan to redirect the Danube River to refill the lake. I mean, what could go wrong, right? A lake of this size, that close to where I live? I had to go and take a look for myself. In fact, there was no way of overlooking the lack of water. When I arrived, it had been raining for four days in a row. And still, everywhere you look, you would see an area once covered with water, now turned into dry mud or dust. This was all water. And now there's no lake left around here. Water is gone. It turns out that this phenomenon is not unique. All those lakes have one thing in common. They're terminal. Their water has no outflow. They're independent bodies of water that equilibrate through precipitation and evaporation. Those lakes are usually quite shallow and have a tendency to dry up easily. Lake Neusiedl, for example, dried up hundreds of times throughout its history. Last time in 1870. And back then, local farmers took advantage of the situation and started growing the crops across the lake on this extremely fertile soil. But, and this is a huge but, oh, sounds weird, anyway. Some of these lakes usually don't dry up, and they shouldn't, for reasons you might not expect. At least I didn't. At the eastern end of a seemingly endless pale brown desert of Nevada and Utah lies the Great Salt Lake. On its southern tip, one of America's fastest growing urban areas, home to 2.5 million people, with Salt Lake City as its center. Water levels have dropped over 6 meters since 1985. Last summer, the water level in Great Salt Lake reached its lowest point on record, a drop that has exposed over 2,000 kilometers of lake bed, an area almost as large as the entire country of Luxembourg, or half the state of Rhode Island. Apart from the huge environmental consequences of this drought, the worst of the possible threats lies buried below the surface. 
See, the lake's soil contains a large variety of hazardous heavy metals and other materials like antimony, copper, but predominantly arsenic. Byproducts of discharge mainly stemming from mining activities in the region. Most of the exposed soil is still protected by a hard crust, but with wind eroding the crust over time, those harmful materials become airborne. These clouds of dust can contaminate entire regions and make it difficult for local people to breathe, eventually leading to possible different types of cancer or cardiovascular diseases. Okay, 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 I get it, I get it. One could argue that this is just another doomsday scenario painted on the wall by pessimistic environmentalists. But in this case, it's really important to know that the worst case scenario for the Great Salt Lake is neither abstract nor hypothetical. Actually, there's a history textbook case that can give you a brief look into what the region's future could look like. Nearly 100 kilometers south between Mount Whitney and the Death Valley lies Owens Lake. In the early 1900s, Los Angeles, growing very fast and basically running out of water, made a very clever move, sort of. It bought the land along each side of the Owens River and then built an aqueduct, diverting the river's water to its own use. The lake dried up, but not only that, it became the worst source of dust pollution in the USA in the 20th century. Since then, the city of Los Angeles has spent 2.5 billion US dollars trying to keep the wind from blowing off the dust with basically two different strategies. One was covering the lake bed with gravel. The other one was sprinkling the lake with just enough water to hold the dust in place. Healer, once a boom town at the shores, had to be evacuated and became the ghost town that it is today. And we're talking about the lake that's only a fraction of the size of the Great Salt Lake. In theory, fix is simple. Let more water from the melting snowpacks reach the lake by sending it less towards homes, businesses, and farms. The megacity itself, the agriculture around it, and ultimately the lake are only possible because of a minor hydrological miracle. Just east of Salt Lake City lies the Wasatch Mountain Range. The packs of snow that fall here during the winter melt westwards and feed three rivers, which ultimately provide water for the area before flowing into the Great Salt Lake. This hydrological system existed in a delicate balance with the evaporation in the summer, snow falls in the winter, and snow melting in springtime. But not anymore. The average temperatures in the mountains have been rising throughout the last decades, causing more snow to transform into water vapor before even getting the chance to run into the rivers in a liquid form. Apart from that, the tremendous pace of population growth and with it the extensive farming around the area suck immense quantities of water. So the exploding demand for water in the region can only be covered by diverting even more from the rivers before it reaches the lake. And to make things worse, more heat obviously means more demand for water for lawns and crops, even further shrinking the water levels. A shrinking lake also means less snow. Why? Well, the Wasatch Mountains greatly benefit from the so-called lake effect snow. When really cold, below freezing air passes over the lake's warm waters, it evaporates and warms the air. Then, the moist air moves to the mountains, and after cooling, the air dumps its moisture on the ground, forming massive snowpacks. More and more people realize that the lake, we're connected to the lake whether we want to be or not. It, it protects our air quality. And yes, the city is already trying to conserve water, but there's simply not enough to support consumption levels by its current population. And the city is expected to grow almost 50% more by 2060. Local governments have not yet addressed the main issue and most powerful tool to mitigate the crisis, the depiction of real costs. In other words, higher water prices. Salt Lake City's population boom comes down to its attractiveness via high standards of living with low costs, predominantly for water. Out of all of the US states, Utah has among the lowest per gallon water rates. This makes absolutely no sense. It also consumes more water for residential use than other desert cities. Homes around Salt Lake City boast lush forest green lots despite the drought. Only by reflecting the true costs of a potential future environmental disaster of Great Salt Lake, people, it seems, are willing to act accordingly. You can't have growth and then continue to live the way we, with the green lawns and everything else and continue to have agriculture and continue to have a healthy environment. So, as with so many environmental threats, we can narrow it down to the point that we simply live in a system where economic prosperity is paid by our future environmental depletion. We have the choice today. Either future generations will pay the price for our lavish lives with fresh green lawns and water-intense farms in the middle of the desert, or we choose to scale it down now and ensure sustainable lives for millions while protecting natural miracles such as the Great Salt Lake. What about Lake Noisy, you might ask? Well, 
That's a topic for a different video, I might say. In the meanwhile, please stay tuned, like and subscribe, and do leave a comment below. See you next time.